Here we are at Elva Beach, ready to go dive on the SS Yongala wreck. The beach is about a five minute drive away from the dive shop. They take us to meet the boat there and they launch it right on the beach. It was a nice hot sunny day. The water was quite rough though, swell height was over a meter, picking up and reaching a meter and a half towards the end of the day. We dove in and followed a line down to the wreck as it's at 22 meters of depth and you can't see it from the top. So this is the bow of the ship, uh, right where we descended. This is about 22 meters of depth right here. Uh, it makes for fairly short diving because of the nitrogen absorption at this depth. The Yongala was a luxury steamship, kind of like the Titanic. It sank in 1911 during a cyclone. All 122 people on board perished, and uh, the bodies still remain in it to this day, so it is considered a gravesite. Because of this, you're not allowed to penetrate it, but it would be quite dangerous anyways. The wreck is over 100 years old, and it's liable to fall apart at any time. You can see the abundance of fish life in just about every shot here. This is part of what makes it such a special dive site, and it ranks very highly. It's usually top 10 on any given list of dive sites in the world. Open water wrecks like this one serve as kind of an oasis in the ocean and they'll draw fish from kilometers around to come feed or mate or be cleaned by the reef creatures or any number of other behaviors. You can see it's just covered in encrusting life, lots of algae and clams, barnacles. One of the few things it lacks is nudibrinks because they seem not to like wrecks too much, but uh, nevertheless it's truly spectacular. Here you see an uh, emperor angelfish. These swarms of baitfish cover just about every inch of the wreck. It was really interesting to see how the contour has changed from in the space of a few meters you see more life here in you know in those few meters than you can see on the entire reef at some of the more popular spots in Cairns or around the world. Here are some gold spotted trevally. They've come in to feed on the bait fish. They'll hunt together and they'll cause the fish to go into a panic, which will cause some individuals to get separated and allow them to go after them. Here is a blue spotted grouper. They call them groupers because they'll just hang out in a group with the other fish until they become complacent to their presence and then they'll gulp them down whole with that big mouth of theirs. You can see a cleaner ass circling around him. He's eating the parasites off of him. Here's the emperor angelfish and uh, the swarm of damselfish around there too. Here is the giant Queensland grouper. He's uh, over 7 feet long and 300 kilograms. They can live up to 80 years. That's one big fish.
you can see uh, when the trevally gets close here you can see tiny little gold spots on him i know he looks more like a black spotted trevally but there are gold spots there Because of its age, the metal is very fragile, so they encourage you not to touch it. This made getting smooth shots a bit of a challenge. Here you can see a sea snake coming down to feed. They breathe air, so they have to service every 30 minutes or so to get air, and then they'll come back down again. The wreck was a constant parade of activity, all manner of fish coming and going from every direction. You can see the bait fish flashing as they move in unison. This uh, helps to confuse and distract predators and prevent them from picking out an individual to go after. Here is a white spotted guitar fish or wedge fish. Here is a cone jelly colony. These are several individuals grouped together to form a single unit. They're one of the most primitive creatures in the oceans, and some theories put them as the source of all life today. Here's the start of the second dive, descending down on the bow again. There's the giant Queensland grouper, possibly the same individu individual as before. Here's a moray eel hunting. It's pretty rare to see them out and about in the daytime like this. Anytime you get uh, predator activity like this, you tend to see lots of other fish falling around him, hoping for some scraps or that he might scare out some prey. The moray eel feeds mostly on crustaceans and mollusks and cephalopods, other kind of shellfish. They have very strong bite and uh, they actually can't open their mouth once they've locked onto something, so it can be very dangerous for divers to hand feed them and it's been banned in many places. You can see them nuzzle this grouper out of the way. It's amazing how gentle they can be with each other. And here's my favorite shot of the dive. You can see the giant Queensland grouper swimming through the wreck here. The wreck was originally discovered in 1945 after the war. They were mine sweeping and uh, they picked it up on the sonar. So they made a note of it on the charts so they didn't go down. Uh, of course, being right after the war, it became classified. And it wasn't until over a decade later that they came back to try to salvage it and discovered that it was in fact the Ongala. Here's the guitar fish again. He's part of the ray family, so like other rays, he eats mostly crustaceans and mollusks and other bottom dwellers. Next to the guitar fish there is a green sea turtle. Like sea snakes, they breathe air, so they have to service periodically to breathe. Uh, but at night time, they will slow down their breathing and their heart rate, and they can breathe for hours underwater.
it was really fascinating as you moved up the wreck and then back down you'd see the animals that you passed earlier as they went about their hunting and other business. This dive was just non-stop spectacular views and very ethereal and ghostly almost in a lot of ways. Here is a file fish. He took off as soon as he realized his cover was blown. Really good camouflage. And the guitar fish. This is probably the same individual in all these shots. He's just circling around the wreck looking for food. The wreck is about 110 meters long. It's really hard to believe that all this is contained in an area the size of a football field. These are the facilities if anyone needs to go. As we were heading back to the mooring point, we saw this huge swarm of spadefish coming in to feed. They're a popular target for sport fishing as they'll fight once they're hooked. I was right in the middle of this school here. They were surrounded on all sides. They really weren't concerned about my presence at all. Things just kept escalating throughout the dive. It was uh, all out feeding frenzy by this point. And here's one last final view of the giant Queensland gro groupers we were getting ready to service. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.